Hi everybody, I am Net Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about thrombocytopenia. So let's get into it. So what is thrombocytopenia? It is a low platelet count. So just as a little bit of a review here, normal healthy platelet count in an adult is 150,000 to 450,000 platelets per microliter. So thrombocytopenia would be less than 150,000. And just again as a review, thrombo, thrombocyte is another word for platelet. So blood clotting cells, that's what platelets are because that's what they do. They form clots, they stick together so that our blood can clot. So if we have a cut, it can heal. So needed for blood clotting. There are three causes of thrombocytopenia. It could be platelet destruction, so your body is making the normal amount of platelets, but they're being destroyed, and we'll talk about some examples here. Uh, platelet sequestration, so think about this word sequester. So if you're in a jury and you're being sequestered, what are you doing? You're being kind of put in another space that's separate. So in this situation, the platelets are being held somewhere where they're not being able to be used. Or Decrease platelet production. You're not making a healthy, normal amount of platelets. Now let's talk about those three types in a little bit more detail. So starting with decreased production, what can cause a decrease in platelet production? Certain cancers like leukemia, aplastic anemia. This is a type of anemia in which the bone marrow stops making new blood cells. Viral infections, chemotherapy, heavy alcohol use, and probably the big one you might have already heard of, heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. So this is for our patients who are using heparin to stop blood clotting. Sometimes it works a little too well and it can cause thrombocytopenia. Our second cause has to do with that sequestering that I talked about before. So remember, you're being put away. The platelets are being put away and stored. What happens is the spleen is damaged from something, maybe like a viral infection, and it's enlarged, and then it starts like hoarding the platelets. And so because the platelets are all staying in the spleen, it decreases the number of overall platelets in your circulation. And then the final is destruction. So they're being destroyed at a higher than normal rate. Usually your platelets last about 10 days, but if they're being destroyed faster than that, right, that's going to lead to decreased platelet count. Things that can destroy your platelets, pregnancy. But usually this is not too bad, it's usually mild and of course temporary. Bacteremia can cause this cirrhosis of the liver, so you can see how sometimes these things can be connected, these causes. Um, and then certain surgeries, for example, if you have an artificial heart valve, that can accidentally destroy the platelets as they go through the heart to get into the, you know, systemic circulation. So that can lower your overall platelet count in the body. How will your patient with thrombocytopenia present? Well, they might have a couple of symptoms. So uh, they can have things like purpura. This is like bruising, excessive bruising. The difference between this kind of bruising and regular bruising is that regular bruising is caused by trauma, like you bumped into something and now you have a bruise, okay? This is caused specifically due to that lack of platelets and the inflammation that it causes. Prolonged bleeding, right? Because you're not clotting like you're supposed to. So if you cut yourself, even something little like a paper cut, it's going to bleed longer. Petechiae, we don't like petechiae either, right? It's such a cute little name, but it's actually very bad. So petechiae are those little purplish reddish pinpoint spots on the skin showing damage to the blood vessels. There might be blood in the urine or stool. The patient might be bleeding from their gums or their nose frequently. If they are a person who menstruates, their menstrual flow could be increased, heavy bleeding on the period. And then they could also have an enlarged spleen. How is this diagnosed? Well, I bet you know the first thing we're going to do, we're going to take some blood, right? We're going to check your platelet count. 
Then after that, they might do a couple of other things. A bone marrow biopsy can tell us like if this is a cancer related cause, if the bone marrow is not producing like it's supposed to, what's going on there. And then a CT scan can be very helpful because it can tell us if the patient has an enlarged spleen. When it comes to our nursing interventions and the treatment plan for our patients with thrombocytopenia, it really all depends on the cause. So we're gonna treat the cause. So some potential things you might do, you might get a blood or a platelet transfusion. You might have to give some medications. The common one they prescribed to start off with is corticosteroids. Um, worst case scenario, the spleen is going to have to be removed, so that's a surgery, so that's called a splenectomy, so you could assist with that. Some patients might require a plasma exchange. And a lot of it has to do with education. So some of the things we're gonna teach these patients, avoid alcohol. So decrease your alcohol consumption or stop consuming alcohol altogether. Avoid things that can cause bruising and bleeding and injury like contact sports. Stop taking certain medications. So if your patient takes a baby aspirin every single day, they might not be taking that anymore after being told they have thrombocytopenia. So educating them on the safety of certain medications like aspirin. And then finally, since viral infections can be one of the causes of this, making sure that their vaccinations are up to date. So that was my video on thrombocytopenia. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.